Alright y'all, you've decided you're going to be breeding betas, mm, killifish, or maybe you have some finicky betas that won't eat anything but live food. So you order a microworm culture online and you got to figure out how to turn this sloppy, stinky goop into this. A nice, healthy, active culture. Look at all that creaminess. Yes, all of that cream are worms. Yummy! Alright, so you'll need your culture. You'll need some active dry yeast. Oatmeal. Any brand. 99 cents. Whatever. You can even buy a little pack. Doesn't matter. Not the instant stuff. Water. Preferably from your fish tank because it's already got some goop in it. You know, fishy goop stuff. And Tupperware. With a lid. And something to poke holes in the Tupperware with the lid with. Um, anything small will work, push pins, small nails, whatnot. This is what I have. Yep. Okay. So you're going to take your oatmeal and you're going to pour it. I usually do about a quarter, maybe a little less than a half. Doesn't need to be a lot. No quarter, I think. Yeah. Okay. So a little bit of that. Then you're going to take your yeast. You're going to take your yeast and you're going to graciously pinch it all over the oatmeal. Yummy, yummy, yeasty, yeasty. Yummy, yummy, yeasty, yeasty. Doesn't have to be a lot. It doesn't have to be a little either. You need a good amount because that's going to feed the wormies. Shake it down in there. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Shake it, shake it, shake it. And close your yeast. Do not forget. Refrigerate after opening so you can use it all the time. Yes, I know, I'm making a bit of a mess. Then you'll take your water. You wanna pour some water in there to where it's moist, but not soupy. So just enough to get everything a little wet. Okay, stir it around a little bit. Make sure everything's a little wet. It will get soupy eventually, as you can see in there. But you want it to look about like that, about that texture. Okay. Now you're going to take your microworm culture, which is usually in a Ziploc bag and it's gross. So I use a, well, right now I'm using a uh, ruler to spatula it out. Spatula it out and plop it in there. Some cultures are big. Some are little. This one was actually a fairly good size culture. So I was able to make, so far two, probably make a couple more. And when they get healthy, I'll start culturing them out, my, startering them out myself and selling them. So yeah, you just kind of plop it in there. A little bit more. Doesn't have to be a lot because it will um, take care of itself. But you want to get a healthy amount. All right, and that's pretty much it. You need to poke holes in the lid. If you don't poke holes in the lid, then the culture can't breathe and it'll end up blowing the top off, as well as killing the culture. If you poke too big a holes in the lid, then flies will get in and you'll get maggots in your culture, which you really don't want. Then when you buy cheap dollar store containers, this ends up happening when you're poking your holes. So I'd say that's a good enough hole. We're gonna go ahead and close this up, store it in a, um, warmish dry location so there you have it it's done in three days you'll have a nice healthy culture like this one yummy you can store it in colder areas for slower culture I'm going to place it in underneath my fish tanks in my breeding area so it'll have the safety of not being eaten by the dogs or the cats because they like the smell of it but that's about it Mmm, yummy.